So, you shot alone, you want to make it look like you didn't shoot alone, and that you have friends. I can't help with the friends part, but I can help by telling you how you can make your tripod static locked off footage look like it was shot handheld. And you can do it custom every time, so it's always different. And yeah, let's hop into Premiere Pro and talk about how we're going to do just that. I can't help with the friends part though, I'm serious, I'm sorry. There's two ways we can go about this. One, I made a preset which you can download from the description if you just want to drag and drop it. But if you want your own custom, individualized, handheld look, all you need to do is take your camera and film something handheld. It does not matter what it is. We're not going to care about what the footage is. We just want that handheld, natural motion that your hands will give footage when you're holding your camera and you're shooting handheld. Now that you've shot that handheld shot and you brought it in, we're going to go ahead and bring in the handheld shot first. So I'll, I'll just drag this in. I'll press alt and hold it and click the bottom one and delete it so I can just choose one of the two layers. Now I want to go ahead and right click this, press nest, we'll just name it uh, handheld for instance. Keep track of your stuff, it's good to name things. Now that we have this, we're going to go ahead and apply an effect called warp stabilizer. Warp stabilizer is an effect that Premiere Pro has built in that will stabilize your footage when it recognizes that it has camera shake in it. It's not perfect, but it will work for our purpose of today's episode or today's video, right? We'll click and drag that onto the handheld sequence. You can see that it says analyzing in background, step one of two right here. If we go to effect controls, and we just pull this over, you'll see that warp stabilizer no longer says analyze and it's grayed out. That means it already has analyzed, we're good. And now if we watch this back, pretty damn smooth all things considered but we don't care about this footage we don't want that footage so I went into my nest by double clicking on it I'm going to turn off this layer I'm going to go back to my project over here drag in the footage I'll just cut it to length because I don't really care right now for my sake what part of footage is going to be stabilized and then I'll back out and I'll go back to the main sequence now the main sequence will play with the handheld motion let's look at it real quick and I'll explain how that works and how it makes sense so you actually understand what you're doing now, this is not a perfect solution. Let's talk about this. Why does it work the way it does? Well, when you make a nested sequence and then you apply warp stabilizer to that nested sequence, right? The warp stabilizer will apply itself to the nest, but not the footage. So when I go in the nest, right? And I turn off the original base footage, that nested sequence still has the data it already had because it's outside of the nest to retain its countermeasures or its counteraction to the handheld footage. So if you're pointing up really fast, right, with your camera's doing one of these, warp stabilizer is going to do the inverse to try to balance out that difference of movement from up to down. If that doesn't make sense, um, play around with warp stabilizer, you'll start to understand what I'm saying. Because we know that warp stabilizer kind of does the inverse of whatever movement it's trying to smooth out to therefore find the parts where it can make it look smooth, it's going to keep that data. But when there is no movement on the original footage that's on a tripod, it's going to apply that opposite, you know, the inverted handheld data to the tripod locked off footage, which has no movement, giving it a fake sense of movement. Now, this particular shot, it's kind of wild in the beginning because my handheld movements were pretty wild, but I wanted to show how it works. So obviously, if we watch this back right at the beginning, that's quite intense. But at the end, it starts to get decent with the handheld shot. And because of this, because you might not shoot footage that looks perfect and get a good outcome for your actual stabilization here, well, I went ahead and made a preset with my own footage in the past that uh, I've been using for a while, but I kind of forgot that I should probably make a video on it and tell you guys. If I go to my effects, right, and right out here, I have my tutorials handheld camera. Um, I only have one at the moment. When I put this out as a pack, I might have more than one, but I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag this onto my footage. And you'll notice that it got, you know, more zoomed in because again, it does the same thing that Warp Stabilizer does, except I took the data from the Warp Stabilizer in After Effects and did it here. Um, so now if I play this out, kind of got a, you know, it's got a handheld look to it. It's not the same, but it works really well for talking heads and things like that. So you have your original, you know, option here, which is obviously very intense because my footage was very intense, but should your footage not be very intense, it might look better. Um, and you can do that to any type of footage you want. Of course, the downside is you'll have to replicate that process every time you make a video. Um, the upside to the preset is that you just click and drag it and it fits and stretches to any footage that you have. Um, again, this is the, that's the medium effect. There will be more, hopefully, when the actual preset is on the page. But yeah, that's how you do it. Sorry, I can't help you find friends to shoot video for you. I wish I had mine to shoot video for me, but it doesn't, doesn't seem to be the case. So I figured this solution out. Hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Go to the Gumroad store down below if you want to get it and support the channel as well. This is water, just to let you know. And I'll see you uh, next time. Bye.